Hello and welcome to the very first episode of our new patron show, where League Cast fixes League of Legends champions. We're the expert, not Riot. Uh, I'm your host, Aiden Frost Rockart. With me this week is Cold Blue Basket Sweat. As we know, everyone on the balance team is silver, and I'm proud to say that when I'm fixing the game, I'm in fucking gold one. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, Nick the King Cooper. Hey, what up? Hey. So this is going to be pretty f uh, free form in the way that we're doing it. We don't actually even have a format for how we're doing this yet. Uh, but we're kind of just like going to shoot the shit, talk about why characters are bad, why they're good, why they're boring, why they're relics of the past, why they're disasters that, are been, that have been made uh, recently. Uh, because we have over 200 years of uh, collective <laughs> game development experience. Well, not quite. Between the three. Uh, no. Um, so yeah, so the, uh, we're either going to do the format of cutting out the episodes at an hour, or we're going to be doing like a pseudo alphabetical format where we're going to do like uh, all the A characters, but because there's, I think, 14 A characters, 12 A characters, we're going to do like maybe like eight of them today, and we'll do like uh, the rest of the A's and the B's next month, etc. Mm -hmm. We'll keep going down until we get through every single character within the next two years, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is also going to be patron content that's going to be posted on our YouTube after 30 days. Um, so you can get it there or you can download it on Patreon. You can uh, sync your Patreon um, RSS feed through your uh, podcasting app. I can help you do that on the Discord. I'll make a post about that later. Anyways, the first character we're going to talk about today, uh, the character with two A's, Aatrox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect in every way. Move on, right? Ooh, False. <laughs> Uh, I'm false, big false. I'm very excited to talk about. It. I think this might be the champion I'm most excited to talk about this week. Yeah, um, or I guess this episode. Uh, I think there's only really one thing kind of missing from his kit. He needs some armor pin somewhere. And I, <laughs> I think the best way to do it is to any like his W reduces armor like as soon as it hits something for the duration. I'd prefer if his W hit something, they explode. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, then the character would be good, but... <laughs> do you think he's actually bad, or do you think he's good right now? Like, I'm actually curious. I don't know where to put him. I think he's like, always been above average, even after all the nerfs. Uh, I think he's been really not sure. above average, too. He falls off so fucking hard late game, and his early game is kind of, like... It's kind of trash until probably level 5-ish. Mm -hmm. Level 5 when he starts to get his Q cooldown pretty low. Um, but mm -hmm. once he gets into late game, act, the character actually does like nothing if he can't get to squishies. Yeah, he's in a weird spot. Um, I I think he's pretty good right now. But if if I were to make a change to him, I think I would lower his flat damage and give a percentage armor reduce on the sweet spot of his Q. That'd be Ooh. pretty good too. Yeah. Right. So like his thing, like I want him to be a beefy bruiser that doesn't one hit carries but is really really good against like tanks and other bruisers and i think that that's the way to do it right is give him some kind of like armor reduction i think the sweet spot of the q is the best way to do that and then it really incentivizes you to hit the sweet spot every time yeah, yeah, I love the sweet spot, sweet spot mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I wish there would be, I wish there was more of an interaction between the chain pull into sweet spot. I wish there was like something with that because I feel like that's one of the coolest combos you could do. Like knowing where it's gonna pull them into like a knock up. Uh, I wish there was like something they could they could add to that to like make it like more of an incentivized part of his gameplay. Yeah, I mean maybe even like the pullback increases the damage of your next sweet spot for a couple seconds. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Like, I just love, like, combo characters like that. Yeah, right? or mm -hmm. something like that reducing armor. I feel like it, I don't know, I feel like they're just reduction of bonus armor. That way he still is pretty okay at killing squishies, but he's better against tanks. I don't yeah. think that would make him too OP. Um, but Do we think his ultimate or E or passive need any changes at this point? I don't think so, honestly. I think his alt's like a big like talking point though because we were looking at a character that had a completely different alt mm -hmm. a year ago and then a completely different alt after they reworked him and now it's like you know what I mean like he doesn't revive well he does he even revive I don't know if he does he doesn't does he? revive no <laughs> no he doesn't revive at all right <laughs> no. but he gains bonus damage and bonus healing as well as the move speed um, <gasps> it's the so healing weird. is nutty. The healing's it's pretty stupid, nutty, yeah. but it's... I'd way rather see him gain like a bunch of like health and tenacity as opposed to healing. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. My, the only argument like, I is want that... him to be a lot of a tankier bruiser because I, I think the fact that he can build lethality and like two hit carries, I that's not Aatrox in my eyes. 
Yeah, I guess. I guess. I mean, and I mean that may be like where we're differing. Um, but I, I think his healing is fine. Uh, as it's been like pointed out many times by his Shin Shin, uh, his healing gets countered by both armor and by Grievous Wounds. Uh, mm-hmm. Because he doesn't heal a flat amount, it's a percentage of the damage dealt. Um, so oh. buying armor reduces the damage that he does, thereby reducing the the healing. So it's sort of like double effective. Yeah, um, I, I guess. Yeah, the thematically, in my mind, like Aatrox is the one that runs out onto the battlefield, and he isn't like one hitting everyone, but just like he's taking a million hits. And just like continuing to go through regardless. Yeah, for sure. But I I feel like that's more of a drain tank thing where he kind of survives it all by healing versus mm-hmm. like surviving it all by being tanky. Um, I, although being tanky, may, like that route may be better for balance, like in the future. I think it's fine to give him like a good amount of healing. I just think that the current state of it is, and I guess it's probably because people just don't buy grievous wounds like they should, mm-hmm. but. I mean, the there current are times state, where it's just obscene. The current state is he, he either heals for absolutely nothing or he heals for his entire health bar, right? Yeah. There's not really an in-between, like that and sweet that's, spot. Mm-hmm, and that's what I don't like, is if, like, you maybe have the potential healing, mm-hmm. but then gave him some tenacity and some, like, health or some armor and magic resist or something to, like, make him beefier and make it more likely that he unlocks the, the healing next. Like, if the first cast of the ultimate gave you, like, movement speed and, like, health... And then, like, if it procs, then you get maybe, like, tenacity and lifesteal or, or mm-hmm. ability healing, really, I should say. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, he just he just seems, like, a, like a little bit, like, boring, I guess, is the main problem with him. Mm-hmm. But overall, like, he's not a bad character. It's just weird just having a character's identity change so much, I guess, is what we're trying to get at, right? Yeah. So hopefully they can fine-tune that over the next couple of, like, changes or whatever to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next character is the character that kind of like started um, this whole discussion, yeah. which is uh, Ari. <laughs> I've talked a lot about her on the show. Uh, I guess my general thoughts on her are that she is a character that when released was the mobile mage, right? She's this character with three dashes. Holy shit, how can you ever get a character with three dashes and flash? <laughs> and now she's one of the least mobile mages, I would say, in the game, uh, especially when you... Uh, incorporate stuff like stealth and stuff like that Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, and just considering how slow the actual movement of her r is and the like cast time between them mm -hmm. like right there there are characters that can like link their dashes back to back to back but hers is like slow moving dash locked out for half a second slow moving dash so i guess that's a good starting point like do you think yeah there should be a lockout do you think it should just be removed I feel like they could remove it. I'm not sure if that's the right play, though, right? Mm -hmm. I think they could remove it, and she would be, like, a character that would be released today mobility-wise. You know what I mean? She could dash three times really, really fast. It does a lot of damage. I'm not sure if that's the right call, though, right? No, I've got a couple ideas for what to do with (laughs) Ari. Um, And I I think, first of all, you, you scrap the ultimate she currently has... And you put the small dash with a little bit of damage onto her W, and it's just one. Right? Like, she can get one reposition. Mm. She can then throw her charm or her Q. I think her her charm and her Q are both, like, so core to her kit, and they're really good abilities. The idea of, like, hitting basically the sweet spot of her Q so that it hits on the front and back almost immediately. You know, charming someone and getting bonus damage. I, I really like those aspects of her kit. And I think putting her her dash on her to her W would allow her to have a real ultimate that might actually like I would think would probably be just like more damage so that she can be a proper assassin as opposed to like a, a glacial augment CC mage. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure what exactly I'd want it to be, but I you know. I think we could increase the range or the animation speed on her Q a little bit. Because uh, I think in terms of, like, all mages overall, for, for what it does, it doesn't feel great. Um, but yeah, I think, like, scrapping the, the movement on her alt and putting it to her W would be a, a really good start to getting Ari into a, an interesting place. And, and turning her into an assassin, which I think is really what she should be as a mobile AP assassin. Is she an assassin or is she a control mage? I guess she's, like, the, the closest thing to, like, a mix between the two, right? Yeah, for sure. I guess it depends on if you're taking Electrocute or Glacial Augment. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. 
I, I feel like she fits a really similar niche to like Syndra, mm-hmm. where, you know, hey, they have good CC, so kind of control mage and like good AOE damage, but also they should be able to like hundred to zero someone with a full combo. And I think that's the issue with her right now, is that her full combo isn't enough to pop someone. Yeah, no, I agree. I I feel like uh, it's just like so. What if the change? What have been the changes that they've gone through with her? Right? They did all the weird things with like her healing and stuff. I don't feel like her passive like healing thing is like never been a problem with like how she is though. I agree with Colton that it's always been around either her damage or her mobility. Um. Oh, and the fact that her W is like is such a sad looking ability. Like, what is her her W feels like an ability from like pre season one, right? Yeah, her ability it's, might it, be the worst in the game. It's awful. Like it's, it's just boring yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I, I would love to see if they could try some like stuff like uh, Colton. What if they did like something like the, what they did with Diana recently? What if they put her um, switch her charm in her and her uh, dash? Do you think getting rid of her CC is too big of a hamper on her kit? So I putting think so. a charm on her ultimate. Yeah, like making it a better charm than that. Like like I, I was, know, it was like AOE or something. Or... I was thinking that, and I don't think it'd be terrible. Um, when you were mentioning her W being dog shit, which it is. I think that'd be an interesting way to go with her passive, where maybe it's just, like, she's got these little, like, spirits that circle around her always, and she maybe gains another one every few seconds. And it's, like, when she gets in within X range of a champion, they, they hit. Like, yeah. I think that would be cool and interesting, and, like, then you could have Ari, like, running around with, like, up to nine of those. Um, that'd be cool, actually, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, wouldn't that be... That'd be fun, and, like, obviously, if she had nine of them and, like, jumped on the champion, they would do decreasing damage, but also mm-hmm. maybe they'd have to proc on minions too. Like if you get close enough to minions, they'll go. Um, just cause I'm, I'm imagining like how irritating that'd be if they just could like save up to nine constantly that way. Also, <laughs> if you were like chilling in a bush in the jungle, you could have your like nine little foxtails or whatever and just blow somebody up. I really like that idea, though. It, it, like, it turns a boring ability into a more active passive. That's yeah. cool. That's that's actually a really good way to, like... Because I don't, I don't know if she needs, like, the healing or if they were going to have... Like, is it currently healing still on her? Actually, I don't know. Is it still the healing yeah, on her path? It's no, the, this, it's on her it? Q. Is it oh, actually? Yeah, what, what's her passive her now? Her passive, uh, like, she gains, I think, move speed when she hits uh, her Q. Uh, yeah, uh, whenever she her, her spells hit a uh, champion two times within a short period, she gains movement speed. That's boring as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Christ. Yeah, I I would love to put her W on her path on her like uh, passive, like have these little like fire spirits around her. That's actually really cool. I think in that scenario, her like she should just get a new W, very similar, I think, to Evelyn's W, where she marks a champion, and if she procs it with her charm, like she does bonus damage against that champion, like she used to have, like with mm-hmm. her charm. Okay. Oh, that, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I, I think she should be shoehorned into the assassin role. I think that's a lot more interesting than a con- another control mage. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I, I feel like you're always going to be able to play her with... You can pretty much play any mage, a control mage, right, with Glacial Augment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. As long as they have CC, but... Yeah, so I think... That's fair. I'm, I'm still trying to come up with some idea of, like, what you could do with the ultimate, because I... Do, do you think, Nick, that if we just made her W similar to Avalon's and then you just keep her alt as is with, like, three short dashes? I think so. I think the cooldown should be removed, and they probably should do less damage and shoehorn more of it, or I guess move more of that onto either her E or her passive or Q, her new passive. What, what if they made it similar to, like, way back when old akali alt where it just gains charges every like x seconds with a maximum of three that'd be fine i think i think another idea would be um use your ult if you hit a champion with a spell uh you get another charge and so on that way you still have kind of have that mobile mage but it's more about being aggressive and and landing skill shots i could see like if you get the improved w charm maybe you get an extra stack because i'm I guess in my mind, I'm still thinking of it as like the, like every, you know, 15, 20, 25 or whatever seconds, you just gain one more charge of the dash. Mm-hmm. And so you get like a refunded charge if you get like the, the proper W charm. Yeah, probably. 
Although that's, I think that'd be cool. That's a lot of power in her, like W. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. It's hard, man. It's tough. She's a tough one. Not champion balance is easy, and Riot's just dumb. <laughs> Yeah. I think we like brought it down to like the right like core design philosophy though is that she was designed to be one thing and that thing isn't the same that it was seven years ago right? It's been creeped or very when was, hard. Yeah, when was Ari released? Season do you, one. Do you guys? Is it season one? Uh, she was released one, December fourteenth, right? twenty eleven. Holy shit! So I guess season that's one crazy. proper. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Hmm. Uh, next character released. Uh, was Akali original 40? I think Akali was original 40, maybe. If I'm not, not sure very if soon actually... after. Yeah, but obviously much more recently uh, reworked. Uh, we actually played a uh, Earth game uh, a couple days ago, Nick, mm-hmm. where I was saying that for some reason I had it in my head. I don't know what happened. I had like the old timers where I thought my I was trying to use my Akali queue like old Akali queue, which is such a weird thing to do. Yeah, like <laughs> um, point and click. But yeah, like a point and click ability. And I was mm-hmm. confused why it wasn't working or whatever. Um, anyways, I think Akali is a mess of a character uh, i think probably we can all agree on that i would assume so i oh. think she's a mess just uh, it's a shame because i think her kit is super fucking cool and i think it flows super well together mm-hmm. it's kind of just like too much yeah, yeah it's it, it, a lot <laughs> it feels so good to play though right like mm-hmm. i guess other than the ultimate cooldown being so long but they've had to do that for obviously multiple nerfs to like tone it back um but all the abilities feel so fucking good even the passive usually passives are like i guess they're passive um but usually you don't like think about them too much but her passive is probably one of my favorite passives in the game it just is an active part of her gameplay and it feels so clean yeah and i think that should Definitely. be kept like i uh, all right this again this is gonna sound a little nuts all right so her yeah. q needs to cost more energy but her passive needs to refund more energy and okay. then i think I think you pull the old Diana that we were mentioned. I think you swap her ultimate and her W, but I think her new smoke screen makes her true invisible. Like, Ooh. and she can't be revealed that, during that duration. There's no like movement speed bonus. There's no, uh, like slow for the enemy. Like, it's just this, I'm like the ultimate ninja assassin. Like you can't fight against me in this area. Like for this short period of time. That's actually so fucking cool. Like I love the I've always yeah. loved the idea of like making non combat abilities ultimates though because they yeah. they serve such a huge gameplay like statement in a fight you know what I mean like oh for sure like, it doesn't do damage ultimate. but it just fucks the whole fight it changes mm-hmm. how it fundamentally works yeah and I think they're super cool like you cannot fight in this area because Akali is unkillable like you oh I guess you could still hit her with AOE and stuff but like AOE and then she still I think gets like that that half second. Yeah, the, the shimmer I think would be fine. Absolutely, yeah. But like, can't be revealed by turrets. Can't be revealed by pink wards. Can't be revealed by proximity or ability usage. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be I'd be okay with that. I think then you'd probably need to make the W. I think the W would be charge damage. based, like her old one. Yeah, yeah. It would it would do like next to no damage. Yeah, and just be there for mobility sake. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, I don't think her W procs her passive. Oh, because they're all procs or pat. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I don't, uh, I don't think her W would activate the like use an ability on an enemy mm-hmm. champion and do your kunai thing. That makes sense. It would be hard to do that because you'd have so much mobility that you'd be doing mm-hmm. it like kind of mindlessly in a way. Yeah, it'd be uh, too free, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it's very different than what the direction they're taking her right now. I'm not sure if you guys saw the recent changes uh, where they're making it so that if you hit a CC ability on her, she's just revealed. In her stealth Yes. Now? And it, I mean, if if it stays on her, like, W, I mean, it's going to stay on her W. If it stays on her W, yeah. it should have been that way the moment they took away the turret reveal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think this, like, this the changes on the PBE that um, you're mentioning got that character at all. I think she's still totally fine. Like, yeah. They're just doing what they have to to, like, make her, like, a playable character in pro play right Mm -hmm. yeah for sure she's disgusting still like her w it's crazy her w is probably one of the better abilities in the game just like that stealth even though it's not true stealth they they added a new mechanic and they had to remove it and that ability is still overpowered Mm -hmm. yeah i I mean i think the alternative is pink ward reveals her like yeah that actually would be fine that way i i think that would be fine too 75 gold to maybe get a kill yeah and i think that's been like a, a pretty fundamental part of the game for a very long time where 
they pick Twitch, they pick Evelyn. I'm thinking back to like you know seasons yeah. one and two, and you just you just have a control ward on you, right? And it's hey, they show up, you drop the control ward, now you can fight. Pink like, wards should reveal stealth, like yeah. period. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Unless again, yeah, if, if they moved it on to like right a 75, 80 second cooldown, like ultimate ability, yeah, I'm fine if that that gets around a ward. But if it's if it's not an ultimate, it it shouldn't overcome the way the game works i guess like Mm -hmm. right the idea of uh, camille alt where you can't get out no matter what same thing with mordekaiser alt right like they they change the rules of the game inside that ultimate and that's fine because it's an ultimate ability but otherwise Mm -hmm. like you should play by the rules of the game default um so yeah that's i I think do you guys have anything else you wanted to mention for akali i don't Um, think so no, she's just, she's, like, one of the coolest to feel play characters. Like, this is a character where we talked about, like, uh, obviously Ari and, uh, uh, sorry, Aatrox being boring, boring, Ari being, like, just old. She feels so good, man, but she's just a nightmare to balance. And I feel like this is, like, com- a completely different case than the mm-hmm. other two. Like, if she was balanced, man, she would she would feel really good. And she'd be, like, one of the most loved characters. I think she, people just hate her right now because she's, like, a nightmare to balance. Like, she's a 40% win rate character that's OP. Oh, well, I mean, I don't, I think the issue is she... Demo, like she demos every single melee matchup in the game like say mm-hmm. for maybe cled like but even then it's a 50 50 she like, beats more than lane she's the one yeah. melee character that beats more than lane it's actually insane like there's there's no melee character that can trade with her like her cooldowns are too low she does too much damage with her passive she stacks up conqueror super easily mm-hmm. or electrocute instantly yeah <laughs> like yeah yeah i i just feel like it's a nightmare for riot but uh, sure. Yeah, I, just, I, I would love the I would love the W change. Yeah. Uh, the next one's an interesting one. It's Alistar. Uh, so I think Alistar is currently weak in the current meta, but I also, not to be biased, I also think that the meta could just shift and you wouldn't need any changes at all, and he'd be top tier again. Yeah, that's so, the thing. I don't I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with Alistar, and I don't know if there's any way to fix like a problem that's not there. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess, like, uh, talking about, like, his kit in general, though, um, I think his pass is fine. Like, his, uh, st- uh, what do you want to call it? Heal. Um, the little heal, heal every, thing, like, yeah. ten minions or whatever. Yeah, whenever you, like, a uh, minion dies or whenever you stun someone, I believe, it also procs off of, which is, like, I don't think a lot of people know that. Mm-hmm. I, did, I did not uh, know that. It's just, a, it's, it's kind of boring, but it's not bad. I think they put it in that kit because, hey, that used to be his E, right? And they mm-hmm. did, hey, let's put that on his passive, which I think is fine. I think they could easily change it without being, like, upsetting too many people. I don't think he really needs to heal as a tank engage character. Um, yeah, I wanted to jump on that passive a little bit because I, mm-hmm. I think a heal does not fit his kit currently mm-hmm. and his, like, playstyle. And I could very easily see either like just a buff to your teammates or I guess what I'd probably want to see I feel like it'd be interesting to give him like tank stats on that same method of like something dies around you you stun something or like a champion dies and you maybe get some like flat resistances or tenacity where again it's just like he goes in he does tanky shit he gets more tanky because he's in combat Mm-hmm. Hear me, hear me out. We, I, I, so I kind of like the idea of a, a heal on him. I don't know why, but it, it it's always kind of been there. What if he's unstoppable during his like E, like so that way he goes in. He, you, like you're not gonna stop him. He's gonna he's gonna be there, right? <laughs> I mean, he's this unstoppable bull that just charged into your team. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I guess it kind of like takes away a little bit of power from his ultimate, but. I mean, I mean if they like, made him unstoppable for the entire duration of his ult, I wouldn't have a problem with that either. You know, that that's true. Sure. Right, like, What's... that's the... the he, he pops the ult, he's unstoppable, he's tanky as fuck. Again, like, this mm-hmm. is a rampaging, gigantic, like, minotaur in the middle of your team. I'll, okay, during this time period, he does reduce damage. He has to, yeah. You can't. Yeah. You don't want. You don't want ever like the rise of the AP cow or yep. the Trinity Force cow or any of that shit yep. again. We're not trying to have that one Galio patch. <laughs> You also don't want to do stuff like you have to remember like there's characters like Silas in the game now, right? Yes. Uh, so you can't like have characters like Silas like if Alistair's picked and Alistair gets picked, you lose the game, right? Mm-hmm. You can't have shit like that happening. Um, 
So I, I do think you need damage reduction on his kit, which I don't think is a big deal for his kit, right? It makes sense, right? You're, you're a tank engaged character. You don't yeah, need especially to not at damage. the time that you usually use your ultimate, which is after you used every other ability. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it really doesn't do anything except for protect it from Silas, I think, yeah. and AP Cow. What if they additionally added, like, the duration of your ultimate extends by half a second for every hard CC you apply while it's active? Huh. Right, like, you'd have to tune that. But I like the idea of, like, if you go in there and you hit that sick five-man Q... Like, your ultimate's going to keep you going. The other, like, uh, thing I could see with this is I could see his ultimate, like, um, powering up or empowering his other abilities. I feel like that would be another cool way of doing it, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. when you're in ult and use trample, you're unstoppable. You know what I mean? When you're mm -hmm. in ult and use pulverize, um, it's, like, a longer CC or something like that. When or you a bigger ult, area, you use, yeah. Yeah, or a big, bigger area would probably make more sense, I guess. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's another cool way of doing it because it is a seven second ability, his alt. Um, so it's not like you're getting off like more than what two Qs, I think. I think his Q is a like five second cooldown at max rank with max CDR. No, but that's only like... if you're still in melee after the first Q. Yeah, exactly. Because so you're only getting like one it's... W off, right? Yeah, they need to do something with the ultimate. I, th I feel like that's what we're all getting at here, right? Yeah. Is his heal on his passive is a little bit weird, but like that might just be like a relic of the past. Mm -hmm. But his alt just feels like. It's just boring. Once again, we get to the whole boring dynamic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Once again, like, I feel like we all agreed that Alistar could be top tier three patches from now. Uh, it's just like maybe some stuff needs to be changed just for like the quality of his character rather than uh, uh, how good yeah. he is. I think like, yeah, Alistar's always going to be fine because, you know, boop slam combo plus like 60% damage negation on his ult, like... That's always nice to have. Like, hard CC and tankiness never really goes out of style. But there are ways to make his gameplay, I think, a lot more fun and a lot more engaging. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we'd want to see out of that. Talking uh, about I, characters that aren't very engaging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just really wanted want to say, really quickly want to say, like, uh, also, like, there's, like, legacy mechanics that they should remove from him. Like, uh, you shouldn't be able to Q-Flash. As much as I love Q-Flashing on him, that's a mechanic that they just removed from Galio like with his yeah. uh, taunt flash that there should be like some some level of equality on stuff like that mm -hmm. I, I love the mechanic it, it abuses people it abuses people like all the way up to like high diamond yellow because people don't know that you can q flash on alistair but what a fucking garbage mechanic that like allows zero readability right if they hit q you have to flash before they flash meaning if they don't flash on you you waste flash if they do flash on if they do flash on you, you die like <laughs> yeah i don't know just stuff like that needs to be like fine tuned because half the characters in the game are allow you to do stuff like that and half don't, and I feel like that's uh, not great for the game. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumu though, uh, Colton, you play probably play the most Mumu, uh, Mumu out of all of us. Uh, how do you think he is doing currently? Uh, I d I don't think he's great. Um, I think he's definitely playable, but like he does more damage than a tank should. And he's not as tanky as a tank should be. And he's in a weird spot. Like, I I like the idea of his passive where, like, he hits somebody and they start taking more magic damage from your team. Um, and, and I think that you could work that onto his kit a little bit better. Where I, I think maybe, like, you put it on a stack system where it's, like, auto attacks apply one stack hard cc's apply one stack and maybe like e applies a stack mm -hmm. where the idea is like again like lower his base damages especially on q alt lower his ap ratios give him a little bit more tankiness and and make him that like this is the tank that you play for ap wombo combos yeah i can like, see that put him into a fine niche because where he is right now he just like there's somebody better at every other aspect, and he's just sitting there in the middle, right? Like, if you want just, like, guaranteed hard engage, pick Nautilus, pick Malphite. If you want, like, big AoE damage, there's a million mages that do more than that, right? If you want mm -hmm. a proper fucking tank, again, there's characters that are just so much better at being a proper tank than him. Um, 
so I I think the idea of like a a magic damage or even just a damage amplification tank like I'm fine if you want to do that right whereas passive is just like for every stack you apply you know your allies do one percent more damage to enemies you hit right so if you Q alt E combo auto attack them they're they're at four percent increased damage maybe you know cap it at five percent up to level six like eight percent up to level 11 you know 11 percent up to level 16 kind of thing Mm -hmm. but i don't know i think it'd be a a fun way to go with him and would make him a lot more viable as a proper tank i I agree completely when they first uh reworked his passive to do that uh damage amplification for incoming magic damage i was like holy shit they're they're really going in on this like now you can build a versatile he allows you he's the key to allowing you to build like double uh ap solo lanes right which is is crazy, right? In theory, at the highest ELO you can be at, or like competitive play, right? You if you pick double AP solo lane, if you pick an AP jungle, you lose the game, right? At the highest level of play, just mm-hmm. because you, you're eighty five percent magic damage at that point in the game. Uh, I'm like, holy shit, they're allowing this like new way to like build comps, and he's like a key to allowing this. But it's ten percent. It doesn't do enough. It doesn't really synergize. He doesn't really. He doesn't do enough to allow that to work, right? It's more of like a gimmick mechanic, uh, and turning it into a real mechanic could actually like really change how uh, not only he functions, but uh, how team comps function. Yeah. Um, All right, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm gonna go a completely different way, right? Nope, you're I'm wrong. Just, I'm just mm-hmm. tossing around this Diana mechanic. Like, let's fuck it. Let's let's switch. It's every a good character. mechanic, though. I love that let's idea. Switch, let's switch every character's abilities. All right, Amumu. He's sad. He's always crying. It's part of his passive, dude. And he does the damage <laughs> amplification. He's always crying, right? I uh, love it already. <laughs> he's a sad mummy. He's crying all the time. Uh, it obviously does reduce damage. Uh, I think, like, oddly enough, I think his Q, E, and ultimate are fine. Probably not, like, the best abilities in the game, but they're they're fine. Uh, I mean, he's a mummy, right? So his W becomes, like, he wraps both himself and his target in, like, wrappings, and they're both suppressed. But, like, for a very short period of time. So, like, two seconds, yeah. maybe max rank. And it's just, like, one dude. Like, I, I don't know. Get weird with it. I, so I was going to go into, like, that idea of, like, the mummy and, like, the wrapping up where I, again, making, in making him a proper tank, I think the, the idea of flat damage reduction on his E would be interesting. It should just be applied to everything, though. It yeah. should be applied to everything, and I think you give it an armor and an, an MR scaling of, like, for every, like, yeah. 50 armor, it's, like, plus one. Yeah, plus one. So that way, at um, the end of the game, if you get 500 in both of, like, somehow, what, you're getting 10 each? Maybe yeah, that's not see, even enough. Maybe that's right. not even enough to see, like, like... Obviously, that, that number you can tune, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. think that the idea of just, like, like, he is heavily wrapped up, like... He's just ignoring damage flat off the top. Um, and I think that, that fits into him as a as a jungle pick. I think he should be a jungler. And I think against jungle minions, like that's why that's so good, is because most of the camps are multiple units hitting mm-hmm. you a bunch of times. Um, I could see the the W or you know, being moved to where he's like always crying. I I think his W is in a really, like, odd spot. of just, like, sweat on him. It's so boring. You could put a real ability there. It's boring. You turn it on when you fight, and it, like, there's no choice whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But I, I I think, personally, I'd, I'd love to see him as a proper tank and just, like, damage amplification for your mm-hmm. team. I think he's, like, one of the champions that is playable for sure. Good for sure. I mean, not great. Like playable good on the brink of being like a very strong character with a couple changes and i think that like he's he's very abusable in that like Mm -hmm. if you take him as a jungler and you build like right uh runic echoes and like spell pen boots you can just camp the shit out of lane and his q range is so long like his q in my mind is as easy to hit as nautilus q which is basically point and click Mm mm-hmm um so like you can abuse the lane and then just like right you q auto e if you went electrocute that's half of their health if you have a laner who has any damage they die yeah um but again i don't think that he should be able to burst people like that yeah right he's, what if, he's a tank what if he can uh like uh rockly like front lotus people 
you know when Rock Lee like fucking gets behind Gar and wraps him up in bandages. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. What if he, what if a movie can do that? It's just set alt, but he wraps him in bandages. <laughs> <laughs> I think True. Aiden, what you're really getting at is we need a Rock Lee set skin. Yeah, that'd that'd be good actually. Because he uh, doesn't use any jutsu; he just uses his fists. After we get a fucking JoJo set skin, can we? Oh, but like, yeah. can you think of his W? And it's just like that move that a uh, guy does with like the giant dragon. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, the dragon set. fist or whatever dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Naruto <laughs> aside. We gotta go one Anivia. episode without talking about it. No, we don't. Um, maybe unpopular opinion. I think this character is totally fine, and I don't think there should be any changes. I don't know if I, I. I don't know if I like want any changes either. Right? Her egg has to stay in her kit no matter what. Yep. Like that. It, that's core. You can't ever change that. Her wall. I think. I, I think literally the only thing you can change about this character is her e. I was gonna say that, yeah. I was gonna say her E is the only thing, and I think you could. I think there's a world in which you could make her alt like a non-toggle thing, but I don't know if, how you'd go about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. But I'm saying like that's the only other ability I could see being changed because it is a little bit boring. It's used as a farming tool for 85 percent of the game, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't you think know, so if either. It, if it exists on some characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, what about I her E though? We go with um, the, yeah, we go with the Diana treatment and we swap her W and her ult so that her <laughs> her ultimate is just a little smaller and less strong, and her W is just like Talia size. Her ultimate just becomes Gara's like perfect defense. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> just a massive ice wall that stops dashes, blocks projectiles. I that her yeah, I, her I, ultimate's I her think... egg. <laughs> yeah, she turns into egg. Egg. I don't think there's anything wrong. With, like, I I don't think any of you should be changed. I think she's fine. Yeah, I think she holds up really well. Like, has she? I what so changes well. has she had? Has she had since season one? So the only thing they changed is, I believe. Get, don't I mean? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, don't correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> is the ultimate needs to charge both to get to full damage and mm-hmm. to allow her e to deal double damage yes to get to full damage to get to full size and to apply frostbite but it, I think need, you... it needs some more time whereas it used to do it instantly yeah. which is where you'd e and then you'd pop yeah ultimate. exactly and that that i think is definitely good i i think she's in a pretty good spot yeah i personally don't love the egg mechanic um no but but i think it's too iconic and that's it's sort super of the, iconic that's sort yeah. of the thing yeah egg iconic um I could see like it's tough, but I I think maybe reallocation of some damage is the only thing I might say. Mm-hmm. Where I I think I'd be fine if they even made the E do more damage if you were affected by frostbite and less damage if you weren't. Right now, right, it's double damage, but like lower the base value of it and then make it triple damage if you're frostbite. That'd be fine. It shouldn't be ability to like ever toss out. Yeah, really. yeah, and that's that's the thing, right? Like you should never just be eating somebody for flat point and click damage. And the, the reason I have an issue with it is because it's point and click, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if it was a skill shot, I, I would be fine with it. But you should walk up and harass somebody with it. That's kind of lame. Um, maybe <laughs> fix your auto attack animation. Yeah, that's clunky, right? Is it clunky on purpose though? Is the question, right? I think so because like. She shouldn't, be able, arms. she shouldn't be able to farm well early and as soon as she gets the best farming ability in the game, right? That's fair. <laughs> That's sort of why Karthus has a bad auto attack as well. Because he has, mm-hmm. like, the best Q in the game for farming. I still feel like they could clean it up a little bit more than Karthus. Um, I do think that Karthus should never have a good auto attack animation. I, I think that's fair. Because yeah. uh, his Q is literally his auto attack, yeah. if you will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Karthus should have auto attacks. Like, bad. <laughs> I don't think that um, would change. I don't think that would affect the character at all. Do you think his his run rate would lower time, probably like a percent or two? But that's not that much for no. losing auto attacks. <laughs> <laughs> I think hey, that's, that's for a different could... week. That's for a different week. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. Save that idea, Colton. <laughs> um, one more one more thing to like change on her. Um, make it so her Q doesn't. You can't do double damage with her Q. So like the pass through and explode damage. What well, a weird I mechanic. See, I think there's so much skill expression in that. So it's not. I don't think it's purposely in the game. When it was, I like, think the bad. way that you do that is if you double up on it, it does less damage, and it maybe make, for longer. I, well, I was or gonna say more. You, you make Wait. frostbite a stack thing, right? 
where like okay. it, it applies fair. one pat like one proc of frostbite for the you know for the first part a second part if you stun them the ultimate can apply like one stack of frostbite every like two seconds or maybe every one second and it's right like with one stack of frostbite e does plus 50 percent with two stacks of frostbite it does plus 100 percent with three stacks of frostbite plus 150 percent damage mm-hmm. That'd be fine. I think that's cool. Right, and then maybe there's like a base slow affix to that as well. Did you guys ever play Anivia and not realize that you could reactivate your Kyuta stun? Like early no. season one. No. Oh. Early on, yeah. Boy, I was like... shitted Anivia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I'll... feel like he's fine though. I also like thought someone was cool on hacking because their ultimate was up every fucking like 15 seconds. They probably were though. <laughs> That's reason. probably true in season one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's um, just cool, man. Yeah. I I, oh, nice nice pun, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think well, she's like, fine. like, ice pun. Yeah. She's an ice character guy. I want to talk about somebody who's the anti, anti-ice anti character, the fire character. You mean hot? It's Annie, the yeah, dark mean the character that's really <laughs> hot? Like, you can't yeah. say that. <laughs> true. How do we fix this character, dude? She's a nightmare, right? I think throw away her entire kit and start from the ground up. But the like, yeah, I mean, yes, and that's sort of not like our job. Um, but I think I think she has to retain her ease of use. Like she has to be easy to play. I agree. Like, period. And I don't know how to like maintain that. I guess. Are there any? The, I feel like the only iconic ability is her stun and her ultimate. I think that she should have a stun, and I think she should keep tippers. Um. I think I, you scrap the passive and the E. I think and the W. I think um, W is boring. Yeah, yeah. I think the idea of Q being just like a, a point and click damage. You get your cooldown and your mana back a little bit on last hit. That's good. Um, I think passive W and E are kind of shit. Um, I like the idea of E giving movement speed like it currently does, but I. I think that there there could probably be some some changes to that. W definitely needs something, I, and I and it's hard to say, right? Because right now it's just so boring. It's just cone of damage. She's a burst mage. Cone of damage. Yeah. So my initial thought was like make more of her abilities work with her tibbers, but I feel like that's not fun at the end stage, right? Then you're just controlling an AI character to do stuff for you. Because I really like how Molten Shield works with Tibbers. I like that idea. You put a Molten Shield on yourself and your bear. That's like kind of what is your kit, you know what I mean? Uh but I feel like if you make all the abilities do that, it's that's kind of boring, right? What if she just has Molten Shield? Oh I mean she and Tibbers have Molten Shield while he's out. Like Yeah. Increase the cooldown, maybe decrease the duration. But it's this big spike of Annie is a very powerful character during this time. Yeah, maybe uh, her sp- maybe her spells are mirrored off of Tivers. Like it's just, Tivers it's also boring, cast. Right? Yeah, I mean, yes, yes. It's I, not good. I I think this character is destined to be kind of boring. That's this is fair. her purpose in life. So if we're gonna keep her like as a boring uh, learning mages character, right? I don't know if you like want a summon then. You know what I mean? I mean, probably not, but it's not, I feel like it's not so much a summon so much a, like as a burst spell. Like, yeah, yeah but, like you could it's just not, like, make it the burst spell. It was, I guess we we're, I mean, getting. yes, but I, I, unfortunately I think it's too tied with her identity now as having Tibbers. And I don't think there's a way you can like divorce mm-hmm. those two from one another. What if it like lasts for seven seconds instead of 45 and it just I mean, ravages like during those seven seconds. You're that would be fine. Fucking... Anytime any sons a character, she summons Tivers to attack them like <laughs> endlessly for a couple seconds. I think I'd... like I'd be fine if you had like you dropped him and it did like a big chunk of damage at the beginning, and then like he's there for like three or four seconds, almost like fiddlesticks alt level of damage, where it's just like Yeah, he, like chases If you're them standing down or next to this giant burning bear, like you're gonna get fucked up. Mm-hmm. I, I just feel like I, I personally feel like if we are keeping the she needs to be a beginner character. I feel like having a summon that lasts 45 seconds isn't intuitive at all. Like, So it can be used as a burst spell, right? But I don't know if that's a good excuse to have something that, in theory, should be used to like block abilities, chase people down. You have to be like R-clicking to like move it around, micro it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I just feel like I'd rather have it be like a you summon it it fucking chases them down like maybe it explodes after seven seconds or something <laughs> like or when it dies yeah like that, that's a I feel like that's a cooler way to make uh, her summon work and still have it as a core part of her head or maybe even you know, all of her other abilities like are like a more like a uh, not physical tibbers but like a mental tibbers you know what I mean like yeah. when she molten shields it's like a bear around her sort of thing like a cage kind of like a uh, perfect oh sauna my god <laughs> kind of like a perfect can we, go, can we go 15 minutes like just <laughs> oh my lord and you started talking about it and I was just like I know where he's fucking going do we call it perfect um, tibana <laughs> perfect tibana um no Stupid. but I feel like that would be a cool way of like of like working right so she has like this bear that's part of her like identity but she summons and it, it's not like you just it's just around it's not you're just not just hanging out with tibbers for the next 10 minutes i think the duration should be like reduced for sure, for it, sure. It's, you can have it up the entire time if you have cooldown direction on her you can summon it and the cooldown ticks in the background and then as soon as it disappears yeah. you can summon another one and i feel yeah, like that's yeah. not good no it's not good all right aiden so based on that idea what if we like kept the idea that w is aoe damage mm-hmm. but it's just like maybe i, I think it should be less burst and maybe it applies like a significant slow. And I'm just imagining just like Tibber's arm just like shoots out and like claws across. I'd be like, yeah, that's that's. I I like the idea of tying it more to Tibber's if we're gonna get rid of him as like a last. What if she just fucking game. throws Tibber's at him? <laughs> all their abilities, and it just all burns abilities him. are throwing Tibber's, but they just do different amounts of damage. <laughs> all right, hear me out. Hear me out. All right, Tibber's is a separate entity. She can control Tibber's with her Q, like moving it. The W is like a an AOE burst ability around Tibbers. Uh, her E is like Tibbers comes like to whoever whatever allied champion and then shields her. Mm-hmm. And then her ultimate is like Tibbers like uh like grabs all the champions around him and pulls them in real quick. Better idea, Nick. You, you, you I think really tibbers. if you're <laughs> Uh, he going. plays Tibbers. You're Annie in base and you just <laughs> control Tibbers. He doesn't give them kill gold at all. Uh, but he's like a really weak champion. But you control him from base, so you can never die. Okay, so like an avatar <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was describing Oriana, by the way. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was just like, what you really need to do then, if you're gonna do that, Nick, is like make it so her auto attack like applies a burn, and when she keeps <laughs> auto attacking, they get more burned and it does more damage. Yeah. Christ, yeah. I don't even think that would be a bad idea. Applying a burn to her auto attack, she's throwing fire at them. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. the last one, uh, assuming that we're done with talking to Fanny, um, Aphelios. All right. Disclaimer. Uh, I don't know enough about this character <laughs> to talk move. about it super in depth. Yeah, I, so I feel like we're all on the same page, though, right? None of us feel confident enough to talk about him, but I feel like that's a problem with this character. Like, we talk about it every week on the show, but if you're playing against him, you have no idea what the fuck he's doing ever. Grant, yes. And that's Granted, problematic. I've, I've only played three games of him. And I think that would help tremendously. Um, I I agree, but I don't know if I don't know if the like the the caveat for playing against a character is you have to have played ten yes. games on them to understand. Uh, yeah, what I, they're I doing. agree. I agree. Yes, and I think that's a little problematic. I don't think there's a, an issue with a character being as complex as he is. Mm-hmm. I think it just needs to be more clear. Like there just yeah. needs to be more clarity in what he does. I don't think he's necessarily like busted like everyone else seems to, and I certainly don't think he should be deleted. Um, but I I think his num like currently his numbers are just too strong, like full mm-hmm. stop. No, his numbers are too strong and he's confusing. Right? If you fix yes. first, you need to figure out a way to fix clarity. I'm not sure how you go about that. Do you just give uh when you start up the game loading screen, it just gives you like a page to read? I mean, um, maybe, but like, I don't know. Maybe. Well, all right. First step is like you need to see which guns he has. And I think you need mm-hmm. to see which guns he has, like, upcoming. Uh, maybe not the specific order that he has, but sort of, like, these are two that are active. This is his upcoming, and it gains, like, clarity of when he's running out of ammo. Like, maybe ammo's displayed to the enemy team. Mm-hmm. If it's not already, I'm I'm not sure if it is. What if it was, like, you know how he's based around the moon, and in theory they were going to do the thing where, like, if it was a full moon, uh, mm-hmm. you'd do more damage or whatever? What if you literally had something in Summoner's Rift, like, a moon that like is shifting or something like that and that shifts based on like what he has as his gun or something like that you know like something that's very clear like i don't know I, I would just love like anything even or like if he has a certain gun you can literally just hover on him and read it what it does yeah but be better yeah i mean it'd be, it'd be tough to like say that it would be fine to read that much in in game 
Mm-hmm. Um, and in your idea, I think not bad. Why don't, why don't we die in it, dude? There's a <laughs> there's a moon phase in the game, and it's, it affects what gun he has. So like, all right, sorry guys, we can't fight for two minutes because it's uh it's a crescent moon, and I have um gravitum, but I need infernium. I actually, dude, that that sounds like crazy people talk. But what if every <laughs> two minutes there was a moon phase? That's what I'm saying. Like that's right, so fucking cool. Everyone wants to like just kill certainly T right and and shoot down his ideas. We need to be leaning more into them, dude. There's a moon in Summoner's Rift and it fucking waxes and wanes, and those waxes and wanes affects his uh, affects Aphelius's power. Like he's not powerful when the moon's not powerful. Does that's that actually does that cool factor into the, the elemental Drake cell? <laughs> no. Unless the ocean one is like there, because the ocean and the moon and stuff. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, science. Big science, yeah. You get you get ocean so the the moon is stronger that game. <laughs> yeah, the phases are shorter. No, I mean that's that's maybe a little too much. But I would that's be a fine cool with mechanic. that. Yeah, I, I guess mean, the only. No, granted, it's... there's a character in, in Dota that's like Night Stalker, and for half the game he's dog. He's pretty fucking bad. Like during the daytime, in a nighttime, he's fucking OP. <laughs> but sort of like making maybe like narrowing those waves a little bit. It's a cool idea though, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess the only only problem with that is like how I guess you have how does your second gun work with that? Um, I don't know. But other other than that, like I love the idea of the primary gun being based off like a moon phase in game. Like that's, that's super unique. Yeah, and easier to understand than him running out of ammo, using ten on abilities, using ten on ultimates, uh, autoing uses one, all them at fifty. You have to pay attention to the ammo on both them. Mm-hmm. Like that's confusing, right? Yeah. Yeah, because in the- in theory, if you're playing against Aphelios to the highest degree, you keep track of all those different things, right? You keep track of what gun he cycled through, what gun is his primary, secondary, the ammo on them, and how much he's using abilities, right? Mm-hmm. Which is but too much, I think. It's just difficult to do that in a league game. Yeah, like, of course. When there's so much going on. Um, but I like like I said, I don't think this character's interactions are necessarily busted. They just need to be more clear what it does. Like if I have a turret down, you should know exactly what thing that's going to do and how that's going to affect you if the turret shoots you how many clips have you seen of him having a turret on one side of the map and then someone walks up to it takes like two hits and then he alts them from base and they die yeah that's that's what i mean yeah Yeah. it's like uh, yeah i I don't know i don't know how to make that more clear um how many guns does he currently have five five okay okay i don't even know that like (laughs) <laughs> I think that, that's and you guys kind of beat it into the ground, but I think that's the biggest issue with the Velios. Like, but okay, okay, you don't I, know I, what's happening. I will argue this for all the clips we've seen. I mean, how many is that? Less than. I mean, I've pers- I, I've not seen all of them, but like less than one hundred, like total. Oh, no. And and if, how many games at, like total have been played? Yeah, but if you look at every single clip too, it's always the same two interactions. It's either like Inferium Alt, where it like AOEs them all because mm-hmm. they all like AOE off each other, which is a mechanic that they need to fix in itself, right? That's why Jinx is OP late game. Um, and then the other one is like with the turret gimmick stuff because people don't know that if he has a certain if he if he has his rifle secondary, he can Shoot mark them for infinitely. a long range follow up, yes. right? People are like that's something that people can learn. But the other one I think is literally just I don't think aoe stacking mechanics are good i guess i i think the the way to fix that is to add like a a small channel timer to the next auto attack so that Mm -hmm. way there is time okay if they're cc'd they're gonna die which is you know fine because you got you clumped up for an oriana ult into a malphite ult that kept you in place that whole time but if you are like just running away together you still have that time to separate and like okay we need like we got we all get hit with a fellow assault we gotta move like we gotta get out of the way no, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, at that point, it becomes pl- like similar to playing against like a brand passive. Yeah, it's just it's. A, I think the main thing is clarity. Clarity for sure. Yeah. But. So now we're going to talk about how they should rework the summoner spell clarity, right? <laughs> True. I I don't know how to I don't know how to fix that. Flash is Rem- too good. Remove it. Remove flash. Period. <laughs> we could oh. eventually like move into stuff like that. But, yeah, uh, that's actually good. I feel like that's a good stopping point. Uh, yeah, I think we will end up doing like uh, like pseudo alphabetical. Uh, we'll try to do like letters. So next week, next not next week, next month, uh, we'll be talking about uh, the rest of the A characters and then the B characters. So Ash, Aurelian, Soul, Azir, Bard, Blitzcrank, 
brand and brom uh some a couple of those i think need to be changed a fair bit in my opinion mm-hmm. but uh uh i think that was fun uh hopefully yeah. you guys liked it uh this will be up i guess this doesn't help you guys this episode will be up in 30 days on our youtube channel um uh yeah if you have any feedback let us know thank you guys for listening bye thanks bye bye